here again, and what can I say? Another day, a couple more pictures going on the disabled list, and today I'd like to focus on those starting pitcher injuries, specifically guys like CeCe Sabathia, Andy Pettit, and Kyle Drabeck. Now, Kyle Drabeck actually went on the disabled list a couple of weeks back, and he's having his second Tommy John surgery. And when you look at guys who have had two Tommy John surgeries, most of them are relievers, and most of the people who have had two Tommy John surgeries haven't had them as early in life as Drabeck has. Drabeck's less than 25 years old, and so you have to look at his future. Would it maybe be better for Toronto, when he returns next year, to move him to the bullpen, where they can maybe spare his body a little bit more, or should they continue to have him develop as a major league starter? Some guys just don't have bodies that can fit 200 innings. They just don't work that way, and that's totally fine. You can still get a ton of value out of players who aren't giving you 200 innings. So Toronto now has to decide what's going to happen with this guy's future. He hasn't been particularly successful in the big leagues, but he's a former top prospect. He's got a good arsenal, but maybe if we move him to the bullpen, maybe his stuff will play up. In the past couple of years, he's amassed about a 5.5 FIP in the major leagues. Not necessarily good, but it's only in about 150 innings. But still you have to look at his strikeout rate is lower, he doesn't have a whole lot of control, so maybe moving him to the bullpen would be a good thing. Some pitchers who have undergone two Tommy John surgeries do return to the rotation, guys like Chris Capuano of the Los Angeles Dodgers, but many of them are relievers. You look at guys like Jason Isringhausen, who had three Tommy John surgeries, Jose Rijo, he also was a starter, but he did some relief work. He had five Tommy John surgeries. The guys that went down this year with their second Tommy John surgeries, and Brian Wilson, Joey Devine, and Joaquin Soria, all relievers. So you have to just look at, is it better to develop this guy as a starter, no guarantees he's able to handle the workload, or do we maybe move him to a relief role where he might be better suited and his body might be better suited? So just one thing to ponder. And then I wanted to take a look at, of course, the injuries to the New York Yankees. As a Yankees fan, I'm pretty sad right now about the state of the pitching rotation. CeCe Sabathia went on the disabled list earlier today with a strained groin. And he's probably going to be out until just after the All-Star break. It's expected that he's going to miss two starts, and then when the All-Star break is over, he'll be able to return to the rotation. And while Sabathia hasn't been as sharp as he usually is this season, he's still been very valuable to the Yankees. He's, you know, been able to eat a lot of innings, and he's amassed a 1.9 warp so far this season. So it's not like he's being absolutely terrible. And, you know, he's supposed to be the ace of the staff, someone that you can rely on to take you into all the starts and have a chance to win. And in his place, he's going to have Adam Warren, a guy from AAA, coming up to pitch in his place. Adam Warren is more like an innings eater, one of those in-between guys, someone who might be a fifth starter at the major leagues, but is more like one of those lower leverage reliever types. And so he doesn't get a whole lot of strikeouts, and Sabathia, obviously, as the ace of the rotation, is more prone to getting the strikeouts. Adam Warren will be able to give the Yankees some length. They'll definitely need that with their bullpen because Andy Pettit also went down and Freddie Garcia will be stepping into the rotation. And so for a two-start stint, not the worst possible scenario. When the All-Star break comes around, the Yankees will be able to realign their rotation to cover their weakest link in Freddie Garcia. And that's because Andy Pettit went down this today with a strained or actually a broken fibula. And broken fibulas, if it's a hairline fracture, usually take greater than 64 days to return from injury. But if it's a non-hairline fracture, you can sometimes get back a little bit sooner. But the Yankees expect Pettit to be out at least six to eight weeks. And in that time, Freddie Garcia, who hasn't really performed very well this season, and he's had his role cut considerably because of his struggles, will be filling in. He has a .1 warp for the year. Andy Pettit has been a godsend to the Yankees rotation with a .9 warp. And the Yankees are just looking for Garcia to give them some innings. They already have 
Sabathia returning after the All-Star break, and then they have guys like Hiroki Kuroda, he, Phil Hughes, and Ivan Nova to cover innings, but out of Freddie Garcia, they're hoping to see something like they saw last year. Garcia doesn't get a whole lot of strikeouts, though, and so he's going to rely a lot more on his pitchers, and I'm sorry, his infielders and outfielders to help him out a little bit more when he's pitching. So, not the worst, worst case scenario for the Yankees, but losing their top two starters this year, a really big dent to their rotation. So, will they maybe look for a deadline upgrade, try to get Garcia out of the rotation, find somebody a little bit better, trade maybe the last of their really good prospects in the system? Or are they going to stick it through and say, hey, Andy Pettit's going to come back and he's going to be fresh for the stretch drive and we'll have Sabathia to take up some of those extra innings? Don't know, but keep you informed and I will see you next week. So, bye.